collagen supplementation looks like it's a scam. One thing I've been very consistent with is I am very skeptical of collagen supplementation for the following reason. You trying to improve your connective tissue or your collagen. If you eat collagen, if you ingest a supplement, that supplement gets broken down during digestion to the constitutive amino acids. It's not like you take in collagen and it just goes right into your connective tissue. That's not how it works. It gets broken down mostly into single amino acids. Now, can those single amino acids be incorporated into collagenous tissues? Yes. But just because you eat more of it doesn't mean that you will increase the rate of connective tissue or collagen synthesis. And there have been several studies out of Luke Van Loon's lab, which is one of the best labs for protein metabolism in the world, demonstrating that collagen supplementation and collagen peptide supplementation does not increase connective tissue synthesis rates. So if it's not increasing connective tissue synthesis rates, then how is this improvement happening for people? Because we do have human randomized controlled trials demonstrating that collagen supplementation can improve pain, recovery outcomes, that it can improve skin elasticity, skin hydration, reduce the risk of wrinkles. Why is there a divergence in this research literature? Well, a new meta-analysis just got published looking at the effect of collagen supplementation on skin elasticity, skin hydration, and wrinkles. And the overall take home from this meta-analysis was that collagen supplementation improves skin elasticity, skin hydration, and decreases the incidence of wrinkles. So that means I'm wrong about collagen supplementation, right? Hold up, hey, hey. Just reading from the discussion of the paper. However, in the sensitivity analysis, now a sensitivity analysis is where they remove each individual study one at a time and see if they redo the meta-analysis if the results still hold. And it's meant to protect against a single study having too much influence on the overall meta-analysis. So. Again, I read, in the sensitivity analysis, excluding outlier studies showing an extreme beneficial effect, collagen supplements showed no significant improvement of wrinkles and a decreased effect for skin hydration and elasticity. So basically, if you look through this meta-analysis, there was one study that showed like this huge benefit. And when they took that out, it either nullified the results or drastically decrease them. But more importantly, they did what's called a subgroup analysis, where they add an extra differentiator in the inclusion criteria, and they separate out these different studies and look to see if the results still hold. Their differentiator was funding source. So they separated out studies funded by companies that sell collagen skin products versus studies that were not funded by companies that sell collagen skin products. And what did they find. I read direct from the paper. More importantly, in the subgroup meta-analysis by funding source, studies that did not receive funding from pharmaceutical companies showed no significant effect of collagen supplements for improving skin hydration, elasticity, and wrinkles, while those funded showed significant improvements in all categories. Then they did one more subgroup analysis. They did it based on methodological quality. I will read again from the conclusion. High quality studies revealed no significant effect of collagen supplements for improving skin hydration, elasticity, and wrinkles, while low quality studies did show their beneficial effects for improving skin elasticity. I do say all the time, hey guys, if your only criticism of study is the funding source that says more about your bias than the researchers, and I stand by that if your only criticism is of that. But those studies also in this meta-analysis were of lower methodological quality. So whether it was studies were not randomized appropriately, the individuals were not blinded to the treatments, or the researchers were not blinded to the treatments, those can all increase the risk of bias and lower the quality of the research. And the point is, replication is the mother of all science. If an effect is real, it will be consistent across subgroup analysis and sensitivity analysis. It has not been consistent for collagen. It is now being marketed as a fitness supplement, which I find hilarious since collagen literally has the worst amino acid profile of any protein source on the market. It is absurdly low in essential amino acids, specifically the branch chain amino acid and specifically leucine, which is the amino acid responsible for stimulating muscle protein synthesis. In studies head-to-head -head against whey protein, 
collagen protein does not stimulate muscle protein synthesis while whey protein does. And there's no difference between the stimulation of connective tissue synthesis with collagen supplementation versus whey protein supplementation. If you would like to have an inferior protein that might do something for connective tissue synthesis, we're not sure, okay. Or you could have a high quality protein like whey protein that does the same thing, plus also increases muscle protein synthesis. I don't want to completely say that I'm writing off collagen supplementation, but I think this study is pretty damning for collagen supplementation. And again, when it comes to collagen drinks, collagen creams, I don't understand how it's going to help. Because when it comes to dermal application, you need small molecules to get through the dermis. Large proteins like collagen are not going to make it through the skin. It's just not going to happen. I, I, I would be shocked if they made it through the dermis. Usually you're talking about pretty small molecules that can make it through the dermis. Okay, so that's one thing. Then if you're taking it as an oral supplement, either through a drink or a pill or a powder, it has to go through digestion. It's getting chopped up every which way during digestion. So what ends up in the bloodstream isn't even collagen. It's just amino acids. If you like collagen, feel compelled to take in collagen, go right ahead. Personally, based on the research I've seen, I think you're wasting your money.